Welcome back to the Discoverer Project. In our last episode, we finished construction of the boat shop that will be the Discoverer's home for the duration of the project. With great excitement, we loaded up our new Magic Tilt trailer and headed over to Fort George Island Marine to pick the Discoverer up for the last time. Once again, we leaned heavily on the expertise of the Fort George Island Marine staff as they advised Craig on the best way to put this boat on this trailer. The slightest mishap here could have set the projects back weeks. Fortunately, this ain't Marcus's first rodeo, and he executed the mission like an old pro. The fork swung free, and the Discoverer was resting comfortably on her new easy chair. Outstanding work as usual by the boys over at Fort George Island Marina. With the boat safely back at the Fishing Nosara World Headquarters, it's time to start the real work on the Discoverer Project. Here we stand at the foot of a very tall mountain, the demolition of the Discoverer. The goal here is to strip all the external hardware, all the metal, and most of the interior accessories to get this boat down to a bare piece of fiberglass. We're going to start with the most obvious and most external element, the rub rail. Notice how easy it is to remove the rub rail. That's because the people who assembled this boat cut a lot of corners, including the use of through bolts with nuts and washers. Instead, this rub rail is attached with pointed wood screws. While that makes the original installation easy, it makes the final product very poor. The original rub rail on the Discoverer is a one and a half inch piece of aluminum and is about the cheapest rub rail you can buy. Now you can get away with this in the United States where we have nice marinas and docking facilities, but in Costa Rica we rely on a panga boat to ferry customers and supplies to and from the beach. This means that little panga boat's knocking into your beautiful hull all day every day. Here's an example of that panga boat paint getting scraped onto our rub rail. Trust me, this look gets old real fast. Plus in Costa Rica, there is one other little thing that rub rails need to be tough enough to endure. You just got the fish by the, the, the pointer, right? Yeah. Oh, you gotta get in there. God. No, 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 no. So yeah, that cheap ass aluminum rub rail just ain't gonna cut it for us. Later on when we get to rigging this boat, we'll use a two and three eighth inch rubber rub rail with a rope insert. This is the toughest, most sturdiest, and best solution to the rub rail problem. Here we see where wood from an old dock has gotten into the screw head. This is just one more obstacle we have to overcome in order to make this old rub rail a distant memory. The first step is to clear the screw head with a metal dentist pick. Then use the manual screwdriver as the head has become too worn out to risk breaking off with the electric. Man, are we having fun yet or what? Matt finished up the rub rail while Craig focused his efforts on the interior. Now boats have a funny way of just accumulating junk over the years and the Discoverer is no different. After digging through all the access panels and all the coverings, we found literally hundreds of pounds worth of just junk. Now we boxed up some of this and sent it on to the guy who bought the motor from us, figuring he might be able to use some of the diesel regulators and gauges and wiring. But most of this stuff, straight to the dumpster. With all the trash cleared out of the boat, we could finally move on to the pieces we'll end up keeping. All of the wood trim around the cabinet doors and the cabin wall is useful. However, this is a time where it's important to have a good labeling and storage system. Otherwise, screws and nuts get mismatched with the wrong pieces and you've got a real disaster on your hands. Granted, quite a few of these wood trim pieces are rotted beyond repair and will never see the ocean again. However, we keep these pieces for use down the line as patterns, making the job of replicating this cabin infinitely easier. By the end of the first day of demolition, 
we'd amassed a pile of junk almost as long as the discoverer herself. Ideally, only about 5% of this stuff will make it back onto the boat. The rest of it's going to be used as patterns and eventually scrapped. I must say that we're feeling pretty good about our progress after only one day of demolition. Now granted, this boat wasn't put together that well, so it should come apart pretty easy. But so far, no big surprises. There are a few spots of the floor that seem a little bit soft, but we're not going to know how much water has actually intruded and rotted away at our decks until we drill some test holes and start cutting out bad pieces. Now in all the episodes of the Discoverer Project so far, we've had a couple of little uh-oh moments. And here on day two, Matt decided to have one of his own. Check out what happens when you combine a six foot six ogre with something delicate like trying to remove the glass windshields. The port side window came off relatively easily, but the starboard side one was wedged in and it just wasn't coming loose. So Matt hit on the very horrible idea of trying to move the entire three segment window while it was connected. Let's see what happens. Well, we'll figure out what else we can break on this boat, and once we do, we'll make sure to deliver it to you right here on The Discoverer Project. <laughs>